Hey everyone, it's Sam from Wrestling Overtime, and it's May. It's time to do a special episode that we need to talk about. Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard. You know, Tessa Blanchard. You better get used to hearing her name. She is probably the most talented female wrestler around right now. Yes, yes, I know that you guys don't think so. You want to argue with me and all of that. But, well, that's another episode. Maybe I should do one. Maybe maybe we should do an episode on who is the most talented female wrestler right now. But that's not what this is about. Where is she going to go? It does not hurt that not only is she the most talented, she is the youngest in the most talented argument. She's 24 years old. I mean, there is no one else that is this young, 24, that is this talented, this ready for superstardom. Yes, yes, I know, you're going to argue with me. You're going to say, Becky, you're going to say Charlotte, you're going to say Sasha, if if she was did right by the WWE. You're, you, I don't know who you would even say in, in AEW. But anyway, no, it's... It's Tessa Blanchard. The only one that she's not even on the same page, but is at least getting ready to climb on the first page that is this young and this talented is Rhea Ripley. There is no doubt about it. Bailey, Sasha, uh, Charlotte, Becky... Shayna, Rhonda, who else do you guys want to name? Bianca Belair, who 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 else do you want to call out? Huh? Do you want do you want to bring some Japanese wrestlers in there? You want to sh- say Shadaya? You want to you want to say Nala Rose? Who who do you want to say? It's not happening, guys. There's no one else. And what I want to talk about in this episode is there is speculation that her contract runs out soon. And I mean soon, as in this summer. And there's even rumors that it's running out in June. Um, where's she going to go? What's she going to do? Now, personally, I think that there's only three choices. And I know a lot of you are going to say, no, 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 there's only two. No, I I think there's three. I think she can stay at Impact. She can go to WWE. Or she can go to AEW. And I think that we need to kind of talk about this. We need to have a discussion about the pros and cons of, you know, where is she going to go? And I think to look at the pros and cons and kind of weigh positives and negatives and try to figure it out, I think we have to look into her past. But I think we also really need to consider her present. And... I think that you and I should have this discussion so that we can help Tessa make her decision. Um, I think to start this off, we have to talk about where she's at now. Now, we have to put in perspective that she still has two contracts that as far as we know, haven't ran out and aren't 
going to run out. She was signed in, I think it was 2018, to uh, WOW, the women of wrestling that Jeannie Buss, that owns the Lakers, her promotion. And what they do is they come in and they film a whole season at one time, basically. Sometimes two two different uh, weeks, but usually in a one to two week period they form a they they you know do a whole show and then her contract states that she has to do certain promotion things so like um i know last year tessa did the san diego comic con for a while where you know she was the champion and she took her belt and did like a meet and greet and and you know did kind of a question and answer type thing kind of like they do at wwe access so she has that contract as far as i know it's not running out and hasn't run out i can't see genie bus who is over the lakers and has the money that she has not throw more money at Tessa to continue to have her in WoW. And it's fairly easy money. So why wouldn't Tessa want to be part of that? So I think when we look at where can she go when her her contract runs out with Impact, I think that comes into play. That I think Tessa wants to continue to do that, and I think they want her to continue to do that. Plus, in March of 2019, Tessa signed with Lucha Libre AAA Worldwide, and I'm pretty sure that that contract has not ran out. So whoever signs her has to deal with these two contracts already being in existence. They have to realize that, you know, unless there's some kind of buyout and Tessa wants to institute that, they need to take that into account. Well, the people that have already taken that into account is Impact Wrestling. They were fine with her signing both of those contracts they work around them they work with them they allow tessa you know to have the time off that she needs to take care of any things to do with those two promotions they have given tessa basically anything she's wanted tessa says i want to sign with wow yeah go ahead i want to sign with lucha libre okay you know But Impact also let her run roughshod, basically, over the women's division. And Tessa said, I want to do some intergender wrestling. And Impact Wrestling said, not an issue. And not only did they say, not an issue, they pushed her. I mean, think about it. For the last year... Tessa has been doing intergender wrestling and had a long, very successful program with Sammy Callahan. That led to her now being the world champion of Impact Wrestling, men or women. And so they don't care to have intergender wrestling at Impact. Tessa has said numerous times that she enjoys that. She enjoys the challenge of putting a match together, of being able to showcase her athleticism, to also be able to take pain uh, and work on her selling maneuvers. It's helped her grow as a wrestler. It's one of the reasons why I say she's one of the the. She is the most talented female wrestler right now and is one of the more talented wrestlers around because she's willing to learn. She She's willing to push herself. Impact Wrestling has even 
uh, helped by putting her fiance Miguel Avero, who we all know as Daga, um, on their wrestling program, so that they can, you know, be wrestling at the same shows and the same tapings and things like that, and they stood by her. When all of it came out in January of 2020 that, you know, she had bullied numerous wrestlers and had also, uh, it was being alleged by uh, La Rosa Negra that Tessa had spit on her and hurled racial slurs at her while all of them were over in Japan. There were even rumors that were put out um, that she bullied women wrestlers at WOW. And Impact stood by her. Impact totally stood by her because all of this hit about two days and they did not change their mind. They still put the championship on her. And she has it now and it's May. So Impact has really, you know, shown, Tessa, we are willing to help you and do what you uh, feel is right. We want you to be creative. We want you to help guide our company in the future. And they have been willing to allow her her freedom. And I think that has to go a long way with Tessa Blanchard. How can it not? However, I think that we need to bring up that maybe Tessa's outgrown impact. I mean, think about it. Do they have a women's division that can interest her? Um, no. Not really. I mean, when when you think of their women's division, they've they've lost some people and they've let some people go, and I don't think it challenges Tessa. Well, then you've got to look at the men's division. Does Impact have enough good big time men to compete with her um no I don't think so could she go into a program for the next six months with Michael Elton yes and it would be awesome but if she signs a two year contract what does she do for the other year and a half if she signs a five-year contract with Impact Wrestling, oh my God, what does she do? Does Impact have enough to really, really, really interest her? I say no. I say Tessa Blanchard has totally outgrown Impact Wrestling. I just, I don't know. I I don't think they have enough interesting people for her to be able to look down the line and say, yeah, I'm gonna I want to do a program with him. I want to do a program with him. I want to do a program with him. And if they sign so and so, I want to do a program with her. I don't think they have that. <clears throat> So, let's talk about WWE. Can, can Tessa go to WWE? Yes, I hear you. You're saying, yes, yes, yes. You're doing the Daniel Bryan chant. I know. Do I want her to go to WWE? Yeah, I kind of do. I want to see her wrestle Charlotte. I want to see her wrestle Becky. Not to mention Sasha and Bailey. And think, 
she could go wrestle Shayna Baszler. But the real thing that intrigues me about WWE, can you imagine WWE setting their WWE women's wrestling division up for the next 10 years with Tessa Blanchard versus Rhea Ripley. How unbelievable could that be? But I I don't know. Will Tessa's pride let her go back to WWE? I mean, think about it. In April of 2016, Tessa was in NXT. And in April, they had her appear on NXT, and she lost to Alexa Bliss. Then they showed her again in May, and she lost to Nia Jax. And then they showed her again in June. And she lost to Carmella. And then we don't see her on NXT anymore. But they invited her back in July of 2017 for the May Young Classic. And she lost in the first round to Kyrie Sane. Yeah, that would be the same Kyrie saying that you have heard me in numerous previous episodes talking about her wearing her tag team belt around her neck and being a jobber so that Asuka doesn't have to take any losses or any beatings. They let Tessa Blanchard lose to her. And, of course, we've all heard all of those rumors that WWE spread about 20-year-old Tessa's bad behavior and bad attitude when she was at NXT. And think about it. Does she want to go back to NXT? Because... You know, when you think about it, other than Ronda Rousey and AJ Styles, who have they signed that they haven't made start in NXT? I mean, they made Samoa Joe start in NXT. But, you know... You can't argue WWE has the best women's division on the planet. And Tessa has said numerous times in numerous podcasts when she's been interviewed that she wants to compete with the best. And she wants to take on Charlotte and Sasha and Becky. And then if you add Natty in there and... and Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss and Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair and Dakota Kai and Shayna Baszler and possibly Ronda Rousey coming back and and Carmella and all the other people. Yeah, they they have a women's division that is very talented and has a lot of depth and a lot of different type of talent to work with. But is WWE going to allow her to do intergender wrestling? I don't know. They did China. Think about it. You know, they put a belt on her. But Sam, they, they really haven't since. No, 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 no. They have. Think about it. Nia Jax got in, you know, and and went into the Royal Rumble. Took some shots from Dolph Ziggler and Randy Orton. 
And I think we're in Mysterio, wasn't it? So, they might let her do some intergender wrestling? Um, not sure how Triple H feels. I mean, he worked with China, but I don't know. WWE, up until last year, didn't want to have a whole lot to do with China. But I think here comes the kicker. Will WWE work with the other companies that she has contracts with? Will they work with WoW? Will they work with Lucha Libre AAA? No. No, I don't think they will. I think that she'll have to get out of those contracts. Is there a buyout? I don't know. Can they be bought out? I don't know. And I think WWE will make her pay for it. Does Tessa want to pay for it? I don't know. So, what about the other company? You know, the new upstart on the block. AEW. Is this where Tessa wants to sign a semi-long-term contract and actually build upon her star? Is this where she wants to go? Is this where she wants to build? Because when I say build upon her star, I also mean build, as in completely build a women's division. Because their women's division is garbage. And if you've listened to me in previous episodes, you know that. Um, Kenny Omega has not did a good job of building the women's division at AEW. Um, 98 Joshi, or 98 pound Joshi wrestlers are not what is in here. No. Um, so I think Tessa would actually have to coach and coax talent there. But she's been doing that in a while, you know, the last couple years. And if she signs there, do maybe some other talents come there because of her. Maybe some of the talents in WoW come there because of her, or future free agents, or uh, people that WWE's going to let go, or people she's wrestled in Impact Wrestling, or on the indies. AEW is not afraid to sign people. And I think Tessa Blanchard really can have some good programs with the women's division. And you're thinking, what? Who? Okay, think about it. Wouldn't you want to see a three-month program with Tessa Blanchard, as cocky as she is, against um, Little Miss Know-It-All, Dr. Brett Baker? Would you not want to see a three-month program with her and Shadaya? Would you not want to see her go up against Awesome Kong or Nyla Rose? Come on. I would love it. But also, think of this. AEW doesn't care to have intergender wrestling. Kenny Omega is all for it. Rio... And him have wrestled not only in Japan, but on AEW as an intergender team. And I can see Kenny Omega taking Tessa Blanchard on. Can you imagine one of the top, hottest talents on the planet right now? Kenny Omega. Taking on Tessa Blanchard? I can see... Sammy Guevara having no problems taking on Tessa Blanchard. I can see Darby Allen taking her on. But you know who I can definitely see taking her on and skyrocketing her? I think Chris Jericho would wrestle Tessa Blanchard. 
for a three to six month program. Them having two, three matches. Can you imagine it being one one and they have a rubble rubber match at a pay per view with the way both of them are cocky and can talk? And her calling Jericho old and over the hill. And him telling her that he needs to teach her a thing or two. It would be unbelievable. I mean, I just, I can't imagine it. AEW loves to showcase different styles. And Tessa has proven she wants to be challenged. She wants to take on different styles. She's wrestled in Japan before. And so she would love to continue learning and wrestling that style. She loves intergender wrestling. She she could be, I can see her as part of a, fox, a, a faction. I mean, and taking it on. She has mentioned before that she sees Cody as a brother. Well, oh, I kind of also forgot. See, Tessa's dad, Tolly Blanchard, is also part of AEW. Can you see her reuniting with him and becoming a faction with the chairman, Sean Spears? I think that would be awesome. See, um, AEW doesn't care to work with other companies because, oh, the company I keep mentioning, Lucha Libre AAA, do you know who holds their belt? Who's their world champion? Yeah, that'd be Kenny Omega. Would they care if she goes to WoW? Well, no. Awesome Kong was there. Um, would they care even if she signed with New Japan? Mm, no. I don't think so. Especially considering Chris Jericho and John Moxley have been wrestling there. Where do I think she goes? I don't really know. Tesla and I aren't close. I know that shocks a lot of you. I would love to be able to interview her. Or just even talk to her and I'll tell you guys about it. So I don't really know. But if I would get her on the horn. And I would get to sit her down and talk to her. I think there's only two choices for her right now at 24 years old. Being the most talented wrestler on the planet. I think she either signed short term with Impact. And by short short term, I mean a year or two contract. And reevaluates where Daga is and they get married and they make a decision, you know, as a couple where they're going to be and what they're going to do. Or, where I think she needs to go, where I want her to go, where I think she will be most happy, I think she has to sign with AEW. And I think it's a game changer. Not only for her, but for the whole entire company. I think Tessa Blanchard is the game changer in AEW versus WWE. I think because she brings star power to the women's division that allows them to sign other women, but because they allow her to also do intergender matches, it allows them to be catapulted into not only the younger demographic, but 
brings the 18 to 34 range in and they get to see all kinds of different creativity. I think it opens up AEW tremendously to all walks of life and to pop culture. I think it will bring wrestling back mainstream the way it was in the Attitude Era where kids are going to school, whether it be high school or college, and they're actually talking AEW and what they pulled. I cannot see her in WWE. I can't see for one moment, especially during this lockdown, during this pandemic that's happened, her watching WWE television, whether it be Raw, SmackDown, NXT, I cannot see her watching any of those shows and say, that's the place for me. I can see her watching Being the Elite, The Road to, um, I forget the uh, restaurant or the um, hotel room interview show, uh, all of the shows that SC, or excuse me, SCU puts on on YouTube. I the them allowing Brandy to do the Nightmare Collective, even as bad as it was. I can see her seeing that and saying, I don't have to see myself fit in. All I have to see is myself create. And I think that's why she puts her name on the dotted line with AEW. is because of how creative they'll allow her to be. And I do, I think it catapults them and her. And so that's why I'm calling it now, in May, that when her contract runs out, she goes to AEW. You want to argue? Cool. You got any questions, comments, problems, or protests? You hit me up on Wrestling Overtime at gmail.com or hit me up on Twitter or on my Facebook page on Wrestling Overtime. You let me know your reasons. They better be sound and you better bring it. I'll talk to you soon.